Our next speaker, uh, we're very proud to have uh, this gentleman here, uh, is Dr. Bill Gale. Uh, he's the Director of Strategic Development uh, for Microsoft Virtual Earth. Uh, he's someone that's been in the remote sensing business uh, for many years. Uh, he was previously uh, a Vice President with Vexel, uh, which was acquired by Microsoft about uh, two years ago. Uh, and uh, previous to that, he was with Ball Aerospace. And uh, he's uh, played a number of senior roles in all of those corporations. And uh, he's going to give us uh, some of his uh, ideas of the vision of uh, GeoWeb from the point of view of, of Microsoft. So please uh, welcome Bill Gale uh, right now. Thank you. Well, thank you, Ryan. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here this morning. Um, this room is kind of interesting. It's a bit of a challenge, so please, those of you on the ends, don't think I'm ignoring you. I'll try to sort of bounce back and forth, but uh, um, you, you'll probably find that I'm focused on the, the middle, mostly. So I'm going to take you on a journey this morning. Um, we're going to start with uh, Virtual Earth today, uh, what we're doing now, uh, what we've released recently. I'm going to talk a little bit about, uh, not so much tomorrow, but the transition from today to tomorrow in terms of three geo web scenarios and how they're evolving and uh, what we're doing to play into that. And then I'm going to go to the future, and that's where I'm going to try to twist your minds a little bit to where the geo web is going, some of the challenges that it faces, and some of the uh, interesting dilemmas that it brings up as we move forward. And um, if uh, I get to the end of the talk and you don't feel like you've uh, perhaps gone a little bit crazy or if you're not sure whether you were crazy when you got here, um, perhaps I haven't done my job. So that's where we're headed. I'm personally quite proud of what you just saw. I come from the, uh, the Boulder group, the Vexel group that uh, uh, started the 3D modeling. That came out of my division in um, Vexel. And I can remember the days when we were producing buildings that uh, looked a little bit like Picasso pictures. And we have come a long way since then. And so you're seeing the fruits of uh, a lot of years of good thinking on the part of a lot of people. So Virtual Earth today, um, if you look at what's in Virtual Earth, uh, we've got all the things that you'd expect, uh, vector maps, satellite imagery, uh, aerial imagery, high-resolution aerial imagery, bird's eye. It's something that's uh, unique to what we're doing. And, you know, when you think about uh, aerial imagery, for a lot of applications, you don't really care what the rooftop looks like. You care what the building looks like. And so this has been one of the huge uh, advantages that we have brought into the industry, the ability to look uh, from an oblique angle. And you see here that um, what we've done in our recent release, the spring release, is overlaid the vector information on top of the, uh, the bird's eye. And you see that in some cases the, the roads are dotted here, meaning that the road goes behind the building. And the only way to do that is if you have a full, accurate 3D model that you can use to uh, um, develop that representation so you know where the roads are, whether they're visible or not. And of course, the uh, 3D models, and we've got hundreds of cities now, so we're, we've really ramped up quite extensively over the past couple of years. But one of the important things here, you notice I've said complete, current, and accurate, because it's one thing to produce all of this data and put it up on the GeoWeb. It's another thing to make it consistent 
accurate, complete on a global basis. And that really is the major challenge that uh, we've been facing. So on top of the content, functionality, of course, is very, very important. And so we've got a number of things in, in virtual Earth that uh, a lot of people are finding very useful. Proximity POI search, you can go in and uh, find all of a, a certain type of POI uh, within a given area. Driving and walking directions with uh, traffic-based routes, uh, directions in 15 languages, geocoding and reverse geocoding, a very important thing to a lot of people here. GeoRS feeds, customizable 3D video tours, shapes and layers. Those are all pretty standard elements of of this kind of thing, but making them work properly is not a simple thing. Making it easy to use, and that's been one of the huge benefits that has come out of Google Earth and, and Virtual Earth, the ability to take geospatial information that's been siloed among specialists and making it easy to use for six and a half billion people in the world is really where we're headed. So we combine our 2D and 3D in a browser-based um, visualization. We ensure simple integration with uh, other software, such as BI and ERP and, and the data that comes from those systems. Uh, we have cross-browser support, uh, tools for customization, and standard APIs. All those things are very important for making all of this easy to use. And we do have an ongoing commitment to GeoWeb applications, uh, and that includes licensing and SLAs, support, APIs, uh, integration with all of our other products as well as uh, support for standards such as KML. But I think most important to what we're doing is our commitment to ongoing innovation. And we're really pushing the state of the art in many areas. And we continue to push that. And one of the things that you see here is trees uh, that we have added to our 3D models in uh, recent release. Denver, for example, has 300,000 trees that we have gone in individually identified through an automated system taken those trees and replaced them with models, and that's what we have in our 3D today. And you know, um, you know you're making progress when uh, the bloggers come back and see these trees and they say things like, no, wait a minute, I know that tree, that's a pine, not an oak. You know, you know you're, you're coming close to succeeding, we'll put it that way. Now, none of this comes easy and uh, really takes a lot of experience to get this right. Uh, we go all the way back to 1995 when we launched our first consumer products in the geospatial arena with MapPoint. And we've added a lot of capability since then. Uh, the web services, uh, virtual earth that came out just a few years ago, and the acquisitions including the one that I was part of, Excel, uh, several others, Geotango, Multimap, and Caligari. So we continue to expand and we continue to build on um, over a decade of experience now. And this, uh, this approach is validated by all of our customers, and um, there's probably not a one here that you don't recognize. And so all of these important customers depend on us for their web applications, their map-based web applications. Now, what I want to do next is talk about these evolving <coughs> geo-web scenarios and how uh, the geo-web online mapping capability is important to these uh, business or enterprise areas. First of these is connecting with customers on the web. Um, this is by now a fairly standard thing, but it's still evolving. Second is engaging customers on location. This is relatively new, the ability to use online capability on location at a site and enhance a, a customer's experience. And the third is visualizing business information. And again, this is a a somewhat established area, but it is growing rapidly and evolving quickly. So the first scenario, connecting with customers on the web. An example I'm going to use here is FedEx. Um, FedEx has been building uh, their website around virtual Earth, and they found that it is uh, a very, very good way of engaging and keeping customers, because customers now can go to their website, quickly find out locations, see what you know, where those locations are, not just on a map, but you know, what it looks like. And they built this uh, as a proof of concept in three weeks. So again, that goes back to ease of use, simplicity, the ability to uh, build diverse applications quickly. 